Als je dan een nieuw huis voor je sims gaat uitzoeken. En dan kan je alles een beetje zien van het boek. but there's two chickens roaming around and I love it so much. It's, it's really adding to my zen feeling of 
being here. This is day three, we got here two days ago. And today it's quite nice, it's quite warm, because it's already September, so we didn't know if it was gonna be good weather, but it's quite warm today. So we're just gonna sit by the pool all afternoon and read our books and swim. I'm so excited. So this week I just wanted to make a little reading in France type of vlog. I'll take you along on what I'm reading and tell you what I think about all the books. And yeah, that's, that's the plan. I don't know how much I'll be able to film in between all the relaxing, but we'll see. I started my first book on the plane here. It's called The Cottage Around the Corner. I don't really like this minimalist cover because it's a cozy, witchy fantasy novel. And I think you could do some amazing things for that to make like the most whimsical cover ever. But this is not giving that energy for me. But it's been pretty fun. I almost finished it. Um, it's It does what a cozy, witchy romance should do. It has a spell shop. It has a sort of slight enemies to lovers romance going on. There's witches, there's an enchanted broom, and there's a small town where a mystery is happening. And I enjoyed it. It was not spectacular. The writing is not super amazing. But it's exactly the mood that I want for the start of the year. As soon as August ends and September starts, I'm not in the full, like, winter fantasy mood yet, but I sort of ease into it with all my cozy witchy fantasies. And this one delivered. The thing I just did not like is there's like one whole chapter dedicated to the sex scene. And I don't know why all books need to have like a mandatory sex scene nowadays. I know people want it, but it just feels so forced to me. Like we're in this cozy witchy whimsical atmosphere and suddenly it's like talking about condoms. It just doesn't fit for me. It doesn't feel right. It just kills the cozy vibe for me. I don't know why. It just, it just doesn't feel right. But the romance is quite believable in this book and it's been fun. So I'll let you know my final thoughts when I finished it. And I don't know if I'll start another cozy fantasy after this right away because I do have another one with me or if I'm going to read something more like serious. But first I'm going to finish this by the pool and then I'll decide on my next read. So I will see you soon.
that makes like special fresh biscuits and we just got cappuccinos and he gave us like a plate with a bunch of different cookies on it to try and it's just so lovely and we were reading and chatting and today has been so just relaxing and really like holiday vibe enjoying myself and reading so much not as much as I thought I would because as you can see it's not that sunny we thought we would just be lounging by the pool the whole week and reading books but because it's not so warm we are actually doing a lot more than the chickens are coming <laughs> but because it's so cold we're actually doing a lot more than we plan to which is also really nice because we get to see a lot of the surroundings here that also means I'm not reading as much as I thought but I still have been reading quite a lot I'll talk about it in a bit the last few days we've just been roaming around and visiting the towns in the area and they're all so beautiful and cozy they're like typically French just really small with the stone houses and the blue shutters and the cute little cafes it's like the perfect holiday vibe and it's so funny because I am learning Italian right now so I keep mixing it up with the French and it keeps on like people like see and Gatti in the stores I'm like oh. finally I was making progress with my Italian and now I'm in France and messing up the language here <laughs> it's the struggle of learning a new language I swear also because I'm talking with my friends in Dutch reading in English learning Italian having to speak French now it's it's an ongoing thing <laughs> but I have to say my Italian is already getting so much better since I started taking the online classes with Lingoda I talked about it in my last video but I've partnered up with Lingoda and so far I've already followed a few of their Italian classes it's been so fun because you have a teacher that's either native or like native level speaker and then there's people from all over the world in the classes that are practicing with you or at the same level as you so the pressure is so much lower than just trying to speak a new language on the streets like it really pushes me out of my comfort zone and encourages me to actually try and speak the language and I started in the A1.1 level like the most basic level there is because I wanted to just do it step by step and when I saw the lesson material I was like hmm, maybe this is a bit too easy for me because I do have like a basic level of Italian and the first lesson was with like buongiorno grazie buonasera and I, I got that down but I noticed because the teacher speaks Italian during the lesson, it's still so useful because that's the part I learned most from because it's the actual conversational Italian that I have to learn to understand. And that helps me so much and really pushes me out of my comfort zone. So it's been really great. If you also want to learn a language just for fun or for school or any other reason, I really recommend Lingoda because they have like different learning plans and you can really tailor it to your learning goals. And I personally use Lingoda Flex, which is a program where you can just plan the classes whenever you feel like it because my days are all very different and my life is sometimes very chaotic. So I can never really plan when I want to take a class. But with Lingoda Flex you can just take a class whenever and usually there's always a spot even if it's like super last minute because there's so many classes in a day that you can follow. So I've always found a class available for when I wanted to take one which has been really great. So if this is something you also want to try I have a discount code for you. It's Quirina20 and with that you get 20 euros off on your first Lingoda lessons which is a great deal. So let me know if you start your language journey and how that goes. We can all be in this together because it's hard to learn a new language but it definitely helps if you have some support with something like Lingoda. But like I said, now that I'm here, I definitely start mixing up all the languages. But luckily, all the French people are very gracious about it. And everyone has been so nice because we are trying to speak French. And people really appreciate it and strike up conversations with us, which has been so cute. And just, I don't know, everyone is super friendly here, which I love. Like at the cafe today as well, there was this old couple and they heard us trying to speak French to the waiter. And then they start asking us like where we're from. And everyone's just very open here, which is super cute because also the... I think the stereotype is that French people are not very open and not very nice to tourists, but here that has not been our experience. I think it's mostly in Paris, but here everyone has been so nice. So that has been great. But yeah, like I said, today was the perfect reading day. So I just wanted to give a little update on what I have been reading. Um, I finished The Cottage Around the Corner. That's the book I talked about before. I don't have a lot to add on this one from what I already said. Like it was cute and cozy and romantic. It was not spectacular, but for what it was, it was really fun. If you want a cozy witchy small town novel, this one definitely delivers. So I think I gave it three stars, which is like what I give books that I'm like, I really enjoyed myself, but it was not like life changing or anything. After that, I picked up the Moonlight Market by Joanne Harris because this cover is absolutely stunning it's definitely what drew me to this book but Joanne Harris also wrote Chocolat which is a movie that I absolutely love and I really enjoyed the book as well I don't know if I talked about this in this video before I'm getting some sort of flashbacks maybe I did anyway I read the Moonlight Market 
And this was also a bit of a meh for me, which I'm kind of disappointed about because the premise sounded so good. Basically, this is a sort of fairy tale like story where there's butterfly people and moth people. And they have been in a centuries long war because the moth king and the butterfly queen, they once were in love, but then they fell out of love and it led to a centuries long war. And then there's the main character, Tom, who sort of discovers this world and falls into this war because he falls in love with Vanessa who is one of the butterfly people and that just sounded so original to me and also there was like a moonlight market that only appears in the moonlight and that just all sounded so great and atmospheric so I was very excited about this but this is just one of those books where I feel like the author had an idea that was great but then forgot to sort of develop a nice coherent plot that actually made sense after that because everything in this book just was a little bit too convenient like none of the reasons were explained fully like every time something happened and i was like why is this happening one of the characters was just like yeah because of the prophecy or the legend or just because it works this way and it just didn't really feel fully thought through but the main issue I had with this book is that the main character was so obnoxious, so dumb, so naive, so, so annoying. Just every choice he made was, you were just slapping your forehead like, why would you do that? Because as a reader, technically you know more than the main character does. But at some point you're like, by now you should have figured it out. Like right now it's just getting tiring, it's getting repetitive and I'm so done with you. That was sort of my feeling throughout this book. And if it feels that way, I cannot really enjoy a book anymore. So I ended up giving this two and a half stars, even though the atmosphere was absolutely beautiful. I was just too annoyed throughout this book. And then at some point I just wanted it to be over and that's not really a good sign. That's what I finished this morning. And then I was deciding what to read next. And I'm actually doing something crazy, something revolutionary. I started reading a book on an e-reader and I am known to be an e-reader hater. Like not a hater, but I just always said I would never get one because I just love the feeling of having a book in my hands. I love the romance of it. I love like flipping through every now and then just to see how much I still have to go. I don't know, the smell, the feeling, the look of it. I just love it. And also being able to put a book on your bookshelf after finishing it, like a little reading trophy. That's my thing. So I always said I would never get an e-reader. But going on this trip, having to decide how many books to bring in a small tiny suitcase was very hard already. And I always have that issue when I'm going on trips. And also because I moved to Italy, I'm moving a lot more back and forth between countries when I want to visit my family and my friends in the Netherlands. I realized that having an e-reader would not be very inconvenient at this point. And then I saw that all my friends brought an e-reader on this trip and they've all been reading from their e-reader. And I was just sort of eyeing them like, this looks kind of great, not gonna lie, because you can read in your bed with the light off and it's not hurting your eyes because the screen is like special paper look or whatever. And Leora has this really cute um, case on her e-reader that actually makes it look like a book, which also really helps. So yeah, just to feel how it feels, I started a book on Leora's e-reader. I, I gave one of my books to her, she's reading that right now, and I am reading a book on the e-reader. And I started this afternoon and I must say it felt pretty good to read on this and I kind of feel weird about that, but I'm not hating it. You read really fast, which is super nice. And I feel like an e-reader will just be really great for those books that you want to read, but you feel like they're not going to be so great. So you don't necessarily ha need to have them on your bookshelf for some like cozy fantasy or random romance books that I'm just going to read once, but then probably never again. I think an e-reader will just be great for that because it saves paper. I don't have to buy all the books and it's cheaper to buy them as an ebook. So I'm really considering getting my own e-reader right now, <laughs> which is something I thought I would never say. Um, the book I'm reading on here is Housemates by Emma Copley Eisenberg, which is a book I've been wanting to read ever since it came out, actually since before it came out, but it's impossible to find as a physical copy, not online, not in the bookstores. I cannot find it anywhere. So I was really frustrated about that, but now I have it on here as an ebook and I can finally read it and it's really exciting. I've only read a few chapters so far so I can't really vouch for the contents yet but so far I'm really enjoying it. So far it reads a little bit like a satiric take on like how leftist people talk or like art people and I'm definitely in that bubble so I talk like this as well but I find it really funny so far. Like there's a lot about like pretentious and performative activism and stuff like that and it sort of makes light of it which I've been really enjoying so far. So I will definitely update you later once I've read more but just wanted to share this revolutionary event that is happening of me reading a book on an e-reader. I'm actually shocked. 
My last update is that I just bought these fluffy pink slippers at the supermarket because it's not such nice weather right now and in the evening especially it gets really cold and we have this stone cottage with like tiles on the floor so in the evening especially it's so cold in the house and I didn't bring any cozy socks or anything so my feet have been freezing and then I saw these at the supermarket and I was like hell yeah I need these and I can confirm my feet are very warm and happy right now now I'm going to join the rest in the house and make an April spritz and read a little bit more in my e-reader. So I will see you tomorrow and I will update you later this week on my reading. Chicken on a little French farm, yeah, yeah.
in the Netherlands, in the gloomy, dark, rainy Netherlands, and now it's really officially time for autumn to begin. I am so ready. We had our little end of summer holiday, and now I can transition into my true self, which is my autumn self. The sun keeps coming out from behind the clouds and the light keeps changing, so I'm sorry about that. Anyway, I am back here in my parents' house for a bit because when I booked the holiday to France with my friends, we booked the flight from the Netherlands because I still live there at that point. So I had to fly to the Netherlands and then fly to France from here, which is very like unethical and I am definitely not planning on doing that again. But since it was arranged that way, I decided to extend my stay in the Netherlands a little bit so I can see some friends here, spend some time with my family and just do some fun things around here before I head back for Italy for autumn, which I'm extremely excited about because I just know Italy and autumn is going to be so gorgeous. I can't wait. So yeah, I thought it was time to do a little post-holiday reading update. Um, I have some souvenirs I can share with you and I got some packages here that we can unbox together. So that's fun. So first of all, our holiday in the Provence, it was beautiful. We just booked the Airbnb on a whim because it looked cute, but we didn't know anything about the area. But now that I've been there, I can highly recommend it. It was stunning, it was so peaceful and so quiet. Let me show you the souvenirs that I got. One souvenir I already gave to my mom, it was a jar of lavender honey, because this area is really known for their honey, but also for their lavender fields. And this just was two in one, so that felt like the perfect little gift. And my mom loves honey. And for my boyfriend's mom, I got these two beeswax. Oh, it's very bright out here. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not really working. But anyway, I got two beeswax candles, um, which I thought was just a cute little gift because it's such a staple from the area and I just wanted to give a little something. For myself, I got these two beautiful postcards. Wherever I go, I buy postcards. It's a little addiction of mine. I always love putting them in my journal. And it's just such an easy, small and like affordable souvenir that you can take anywhere. I also love getting them at museums from my favorite paintings that I saw in the museum. So I have a lot of postcards and these are a beautiful addition to my collection. I love them. Then in Roussillon we came across this gorgeous candle shop. It smelled heavenly. It looked so cute. It looked like an old school apothecary. And there was this old lady behind the counter and you could see her workshop where she actually makes all the candles herself. So obviously we were drawn to that. And they had such great flavors like cinnamon apple pie or stuff like that. And we were just smelling all of them and having a great time. So in the end, I chose one that's called Mystère. Mystère? Mystère? <laughs> I can't pronounce French word, it's so bad. But I'm assuming it means mystery or something because the label also looks very witchy. And it's, it just smells heavily. Oh, it smells so good. And when I came to the counter, the lady said that this was based on J'adore by Dior, the perfume. And now I might need that perfume as well because it smells so good. But that's what I got. And then at another little shop with a lot of like small trinkets. Like I am a sucker for souvenir shops. Some people call them like cheap or like touristy. But I love a little trinket store that you can just browse through forever. So souvenir shops just really deliver what I want. Anyway, this souvenir shop had a lot of like fabrics, like plates for your bed, pillows and little pouches like this and I saw this dark velvet one and I absolutely needed that for my makeup. It's it's very beautiful, very autumn, so I thought it was fitting. And they had these little hangers that smell like perfume. And then I saw this one and if you know me at all, you know why I immediately had to bring this. I love anything celestial and this is just so whimsy goth. So that is the last thing I bought, I think. I feel like I bought more, but maybe this is it? I'm not sure. If I find something else that I bought, I will tell you later. But those are all the things I got for now. We also spent the last day in Marseille because we had a really early flight in the morning from Marseille airport. So we just spent the last day there. So we were already near the airport. And that was also such a surprise. I knew nothing about the city. It was stunning. It was like if you took Paris, but made it a seaside town. The buildings and stuff were really reminiscent of Paris, but there was this beautiful big harbor in the center of the city. And just so many cute shopping streets with little boutiques and like pastel storefronts. Yeah, I just wanted to buy a lot of stuff there as well, but my suitcase was full, so I couldn't. Because I brought five books on holiday, which was not the most ideal thing. But since reading was mostly all that we did, I don't have any regrets. So that brings me to the reading updates. I'm not sure what the last thing is that I told you. I think I started Housemates on Leora's e-reader. Um, is the last update I shared. 
and I finished that and it was it was nice but I didn't end up loving it as much as I thought I did. It was one of my most anticipated reads of the year but it just fell a little flat for me in the end. I didn't really connect to any of the characters or the plot but there were certain elements of it that I really did love. Like it was a very honest and humanizing portrait of what it means to be queer and an artist. Like the struggles that come with that and challenges and sort of like people figuring out who they even want to be. And I think if you relate to the struggles this book might hit you harder. But for me it was okay. I think I gave it like three or three and a half stars. Um, I did have a good time with it but it's not like super memorable for me. My voice is slowly giving out. Can you hear that? I think it's because I slept so little in the past three nights that it's just my voice is giving up. I think I need some tea and honey. One second. Okay, hopefully this will help me <laughs> push through. Anyway, back to the reading updates, because after Housemates I started Rewitched by Lucy Jane Wood, which is another cozy witchy novel. When I requested a review copy of The Spell Shop from the publisher, they also kindly offered to send me this one. Um, and I hadn't heard of this release before, but since it was a cozy witchy novel as well, of course I said yes, because I love those. But I must say that the cover initially um, made me a little hesitant to read it, because it looks very like cutesy, typically romance novel vibe. Like you notice cartoony covers that all romance novels have nowadays. This um, really is that vibe for me. I don't really love those kind of books, so I was a little scared going into this. But then Leora read this first. She borrowed this from me on holiday and she absolutely loved it. Um, so I was very excited to start it and I'm already over half of it by now. And the cover does not do it justice at all. So far this book is not as much a romance novel, but more a sort of discovery of self in a really more like high fantasy setting I would say. It's much more high fantasy than your typically cozy small town uh, witchy novel and I'm really loving that. The magic is very Harry Potter like. I think the author took some inspiration from that but I'm not mad at it because I grew up with that so it feels like a sort of logical type of magic to me. And I just love the whole setting of this book and all the characters so far. There's a coven and they have like this sort of coven clubhouse that is super whimsy goth and magical. So all of that kind of made me wish they had made the cover a lot more dark and like high fantasy or at least a little more whimsy goth with more like dark purples or something. I feel like that fits the book way more than this because this just makes it look like a cutesy romance novel and for me it is really not so far. So yeah, I'm super pleasantly surprised by this. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to keep reading actually, so I'm going to do that later today. But that is the last book I started on holiday. So I think all in all I read like four and a half books, which is pretty good for one week for me. Like usually that's what I read in a month, so I'm very happy. And lastly, let's get into the packages I received. This one is a PR package. This is from an online secondhand bookshop from the Netherlands. It's called Milena's Bookshop. I will link it in the description down below. It came with this cute little flyer. It says small woman owned bookstore, English and Dutch book, secondhand pearls, also new um, affordable editions and classic literature. That sounds really good. Um, and yeah, this bookshop kindly offered to send me a little gothic package to celebrate the coming of autumn. So. Let's see what is in there. Oh yeah. First it came with this postcard from a Penguin Classics edition. This is The Europeans by Henry James. That's so cute. I just told you about my postcard obsession. So this is perfect. That will go into my journal. Oh my god. Look how cute that looks. She put my name on it. It's really black gothic looking package. It says mystery bag includes one book and three bookish goodies. I'm very excited. Let's open it up. Ooh, okay, this is Villette by Charlotte Bronte and I actually ordered this book a few months ago, I think like this summer, because I heard such good things about it and it was also like a really good gothic novel. But I got a really, really ugly edition and I kind of regretted getting that one. This was like the cheapest one I could find, but the cover is so ugly. I think I showed it in my previous YouTube video where I was reorganizing my bookshelf. And this one is so stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I haven't read this yet, so that's a good thing. Now I can read this edition and I'm so excited about that. I don't know a lot about the story, except that this is about a woman who I think is a teacher at like a boarding school and she falls in love with someone there, but it's very toxic, dark. It says, Villette is a moving tale of repressed feelings and subjection to cruel circumstance and position, born with heroic fortitude. That sounds really, really good. And oh, this edition, so beautiful. Then on to the goodies, another postcard. Oh my God, this one is actually amazing. Why is the light so bad? Okay, there we go. A 
it's so cute this is like the most autumn themed postcard i've ever seen in my life and now i want to carve out pumpkins right away i love it and then a really beautiful bookmark with a painting on it and on the back there is the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson i still have to read that one but i absolutely loved um we have always lived in a castle by her so hopefully this autumn will also be the moment for the haunting of hill house and then lastly i'm also so excited about this this gorgeous pouch with the cover of Rebecca on it. This is from Well Red and Co. Yeah, this is from Well Red and Co. I have a bag from them with the Pride and Prejudice cover on it, and it's so stunning. And now I also have this one, and it is properly gothic. So this whole package fits the theme so well. I really, really love it. So thank you so much, Milena, for sending me this. I am eternally grateful. I cannot wait to read the book, and the package is so cute. And then two packages I bought with my own money, or actually I got a gift card and then I wanted so many things I had to add my own money to it because I have a problem. Let's open it up. First thing I got is Zelda Breath of the Wild for my Nintendo Switch. I'm so excited to play this. I wanted a more immersive adventure game because I've been playing a lot of like cozy farming games, but at some point that just kind of gets boring and repetitive. And I've heard so many good things about this. One of my friends has been playing this and really loved it. She said it was also quite difficult, so let's see. But can't wait to play this this autumn. Unfortunately, my Switch is in Italy still right now because Giovanni wanted to play some Mario Kart with his friends, so I left it there. I kind of regret it now because I'm missing it so much, but I just have to wait a few more weeks until I can play this. That's fine. I can do it. And lastly, I got another book, of course. I don't know how I'm going to get all of these books back to Italy now that I'm thinking about it. I may have to ship some things or leave some things here. We'll see. This is The Lost Estate by Hélène Fournier. Again, sorry for my French. First of all, look at this cover. That is so dark and hauntingly beautiful. And I think I randomly came across this book on Pinterest. There were so many good book recommendations on my Pinterest all of a sudden and books that I had never heard of before. But this sounds amazing. Actually, it sounds a lot like The Secret History and I'm always trying to find that high <laughs> that The Secret History gave me. And this sounds remarkably, like not it's not a similar plot, but the atmosphere feels very similar. So let me just read you what it's about. And I'm sorry for how I'm going to pronounce the names. I am probably doing it completely wrong. When Molnev first arrives on the local school in Sologna, everyone is captivated by his good looks, daring and charisma. But when he disappears for several days and returns with tales of a strange party at a mysterious house and a beautiful girl hidden within it, Molnev has been changed forever. In his restless search for his lost estate and the happiness he found there, Molnev, observed by his loyal friend Francois, may risk losing everything he ever had. Poised between youthful admiration and adult resignation, Elaine Fournier's compelling narrator carries the reader through his evocative and often unbearably moving portrayal of desperate friendship and vanished adolescence. Like, does it not give you the secret history a little bit? Like, it takes place at a boarding school and there's like this mystery going on and a toxic developing friendship. That's all I want and I'm not gonna lie, it's also definitely the cover that drew me in. So when I read this, I will definitely report back on how it is. It's not that long, so I think I can get to it quickly. Very exciting. Okay, my bed is officially a mess. <laughs> Look at this. Chaos. So I'm going to clean it up and I think I'll vlog some more later this week. Now we had the summer holiday. I'm going full autumn modes. I'm already wearing my cozy sweater. I'm ready for it. I feel so Hermione in Deathly Hallows in this outfit. Doesn't it give that same energy? <laughs> I really love it. So, Autumn, I'm ready for you. I can't wait.